Hello, I'm the Eternal Newbie. The extra L is for lesson, because I'm gonna give you a quick bare bones lesson about how to use a character sheet in Roll20. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and go over the Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition character sheet, but the cool thing about Roll20, at least from my experience, I've played with about four or five different character sheets, is if you know how to roll one of them, you can pretty much figure out the other ones real easy. First thing you're gonna do when you end your game is come to the journal. You got these icons up here. I'm choosing the journal, and I'm looking for my character. My journal looks different from yours because this is the journal from my character creation game on my Discord. Cheap plug. Info's in the video description. So let's get started. I'm going to go with Jack T. Skywalker, character I made for a previous video. I think I used a character mantle for him. Don't remember. In order to drag Jack T. Skywalker onto the map, which is something you're going to have to do, it's pretty easy. Just left click on his name and not letting go, drag it on. Then you let go over here, and there he is. He's on the map. To open the character sheet, there's a couple of ways you can do it. There's a couple of ways you can do things on here a lot. I can either click on his name right in here, here's my character sheet, or the way I like to do it, because I'm not usually looking at this screen, I hold down shift and double click on his icon, and there it is. Go to character sheet, and we're ready to get started. The thing to remember about the Roll20 character sheet is clicking on words. Because for most everything we do, we're gonna click on words. If I wanna roll my hit dice, Click on words. Wow, good roll. You'll notice it doesn't automatically show I rolled on it, so I just click that. There we go, I used up my hit die. If I wanna roll a strength check, I click on the word strength above my strength modifier. I don't wanna click on the word strength in my saving throw because that's a saving throw. And in some cases, like my constitution, they're the same. I got a two there, I got a two there. But for strength, it's different because I'm proficient with that. So my strength check, would be an 11, that's a 12 minus one. And if I put my icon over the 11, it shows me how it got it, 12 plus minus one. But if I did a strength save, I'd get a two. But you'll notice this time it added one. So that's a difference. Doing skill checks, same thing. I wanna persuade somebody. Hey, come see my performance. Persuasion. Yeah, they might come, 12 not bad. By the way, if you're confused by this, it's rolling two numbers because I have it set to the default um, settings that Roll20 always puts into when you make new characters. I'm going to change that in a little bit because I don't really like this setting. Some people do, and if you do, cool, leave it. But I'll show you how to change that. If you have it set like this, you always take the first number unless you have advantage, then you take a higher. If you have disadvantage, you take the lower. Okay, so maybe they don't want to come see my show, show so I'm going to sneak away. Not very good at sneaking because sadly I have to take the first number out and have advantage. Down here, well... I couldn't sneak away, so I guess I better play that banjo. Better play it good. Click on banjo. And I have a set to ask me which one I want to use. I'm going to try and talk my way into dexterity, but the DM's probably not going to listen and say, yeah, use your charisma. So I select, select charisma. Click submit. <sighs> Nobody likes my playing. Well, in that case, I better be good with weapons, so let me show you which weapons I can use. Now, I can click on any of this. I don't even have to click on just the word banjo. I can click on any of this whole line. So... Fortunately, I know how to use short swords, so I can get my way out of here. Or, maybe I can talk my way out of here. If I wasn't a monk, I would probably have some, what are they called? Armor proficiencies, but I'm a monk, so I don't. I'm pretty sure I spelled infernal wrong. All right, enough of this stuff. So you kind of figure that out. Let's say that I'm in combat, and I move my 35 feet. And the DM's like, whoa, whoa, whoa there, kid. You only get 30 feet of movement. You're an elf. I'm like, ah, but I'm a wood elf. I have a fleet of foot. DM's like, what's that? Well, I can show you because I just click on this little speech bubble right here and it will show what I wrote for fleet of foot. See, same thing. He's like, oh, you get 35 feet of movement, cool. Now let's talk about combat. First thing you wanna do in combat is you're gonna to wanna to roll initiative. So I already have the turn order open here. The DM does that, you won't do that. And let's roll initiative. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned this, I don't think I did. But a cool thing with your character sheet, when it's open, if you double click on the name bar, then it goes in the background and you can do things in front of it or around it. If you don't double click on the, or, and then you double click again, it's open again. Pretty cool, right? So let's get into combat. I just clicked the word initiative, remember? Words, fun. Oh, but I messed up. This is something a lot of people do. As a matter of fact, I still do it sometimes, but a lot of people do this, especially when they first start playing. 
you have to select your token. So just simply click on your token. Now you can click on my initiative. Hey, that 20 is better, but most DMs are going to want you to take your first roll. I know I would. So you can come right over here, click on the 20, get rid of it, and put your regular one in there. I have to do that a lot because I forget that a lot. Now we're ready for combat. Combat, guess what? Just click on the word. I mean, I could click anywhere, but if I want to attack my short sword, bam. You know what? I'm sick of this rolling with advantage thing. I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into settings. I don't want to always roll advantage. I want you to ask me to roll. So I'm going to toggle. You can also have it where it asks you every time. I like to toggle. I want to auto roll damage. Oh, so let's speak of that. I hit with this short sword attack. So it doesn't show damage. But if I hit, click on the word short sword in the chat window, there's my damage. Not bad. But I don't want to have to do that. So I'm going to set it to auto roll damage. Another thing I like to do is have my add my text, my dex tiebreaker to initiative. So I'm going to click this box right here. You don't have to do any of this stuff. This is just personal preference. Let's look and see what we got. Notice it shows my initiative is 3 in 1600s when it used to show my initiative is 3. Now if I click on initiative, it adds that in there. That way if someone else rolled a 14, whoever has the higher dex goes first. Pretty easy. Now when I roll my short sword, it only rolls one number and it automatically rolls damage. Let's say I have advantage. All I have to do is come up here, click on advantage, and it takes a higher number. The lower number is grayed out. If I have disadvantage, click on disadvantage, and it'll take the lower number. The higher number is grayed out. Doing pretty good right here. I'm a lean, mean fighting machine. But most of the time I'm gonna have normal. Let's throw a couple more things in here. Let's say that you are a spellcaster and you wanna put a spell on here. It's real easy. You go to the journal, the compendium. Yeah, not the journal, compendium. And, oh, let's put fireball in here. Just click on it and just like dragging out your token, you drag it onto your character sheet. And look, there it is. Now to cast Fireball, I just click on the word Fireball. Before I click anywhere, Submit, because you can upcast Fireball. Let's see how I did. It's pretty good damage right there. 27. I think that's above average. Matter of fact, I'm sure it is. It also makes it easier for me and adds it right here to my attacks. So I can click on here if I want to. Let's go ahead and upcast that thing. Level 9 Fireball. Not bad. A lot of ones for that, but there we go. But remember, I am a monk. I don't get fireball. Let's get rid of that. Just click on the lock to open the lock. Now I can delete stuff. I can also move them around if I want. I want this dart on the bottom. I don't like the dart. So no fireball and oh no, I deleted my unarmed strike. Whatever will I do? Well, it's quite simple. You just add an attack. So Come here to the plus sign, and that works on all these. Plus. Plus. You can add anything here. And let's add my Arn Arm Strike back. Put in the name. Arn Arm Strike. My attack is Dex, because I am a monk. Damage is a D6. Oh, sorry, D4. I'm level 1. And there we go. Oh, I should put what kind of damage it is, because that matters. Sometimes. Not often, but sometimes. Bludgeoning. I think I spelled that right. So now well, there we go. Let's test it. Wait, zero? How did I? Oh, I forgot to change that. By the way, in case you didn't see it, what I did is I clicked on this gear to close it. So let's open that up again because I messed that up. Oh, I forgot to change my damage modifier to my dex. So I just click that, change it to dex. There's a little scroll down the window right there. And bam. Now let's try it. Much better. It adds my thing. So that's about it. There's one other thing I want to show you really quick. Go to settings. Let's say you have a buddy that casts Bless. Bless gives you a D4 to saves and attacks. So I click on these global modifiers for save and attack. I could do damage if so I had, say, sneak attack or something like that. Skill if someone casts guidance. Now I come back here, and since Bless is the most common one, it's already there for me. All i got to do is check it. Now, if it was something else, like let's say it's super blessed and I can roll a D8, I can just change that there. But let's just go with that. Now, when I roll a save, it rolls my 6 plus my D4 because of bless. Same with attacks. Got to click on it, check it. Roll my short sword. Ah, I rolled a D4 to go with my attack. 
And then when I lose less, I can just take it off and it's back to normal. If you don't like those things, you can always uncheck them here to take them off when you're not using them. I usually do that. But I think that's basically it. I think we've talked about the most important stuff. If you have any questions, let me know. You can ask them in the comments. If you have anything you'd like to see me talk about on Roll20, I'm by no means an expert, but I've done enough. I know the basics and maybe a little bit more. You can always ask that too. Thank you for watching. Have yourself just an amazing day.